There's an infinite amount of things you can create in After Effects. However, we find ourselves doing the same things over and over again. That's why we're gonna be doing something new. Probably won't get a lot of views, but we're gonna be showing you how to do an infinite animation and how to do something like this from scratch. Hey everyone, this is Jordan with Sonduck Film. If you're ready to create something amazing for your portfolio like this type of world building content, be sure to drop a like. It helps us know that you like what you're watching. And let's jump in. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is create our sphere layer. Start by going to Layer, New, Solid, name it Sphere 1, then click OK. Now highlight it, go up to Effect, Generate, Gradient Ramp, Effect, Perspective, CC Sphere, and Effect, Stylize, Glow. In the Effect Controls panel, for the Gradient Ramp, I'm going to set the first color to a light blue and the second color to a darker blue, but feel free to set this to whatever you want. For CC Sphere, open Light, set the Light Intensity to 100, Light Height to around negative 50, and Light Direction to around 37 degrees. Then, for Shading, bring the Specular up to almost 100, Roughness to about 0.4, and set Reflective to 13. For Glow, set Glow Based On to Alpha Channel, Radius to 20, Intensity to 0.2, Set glow colors to AB colors, color looping to sawtooth B greater than A, and set the color to another light blue. Duplicate the glow effect with Ctrl D, set the radius of the duplicated effect to 150, then adjust the color to be a darker blue. Enable the solid as a 3D layer, and now we have our sphere ready to go. Next, we're going to set up our composition and use the spheres we just made to fill it out. Start by going up to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, highlight the layer, then go up to Effect, Noise and Grain, Noise, and Effect, Stylize, Glow. For Noise, simply set the noise to around 6% or so, and uncheck Use Color Noise. Then, for Glow, increase the Glow Radius to somewhere between 4 and 500. Now, we're going to create our camera by going to Layer, New, Camera, and clicking OK. Open the camera layer, Camera Options, set the zoom to around 2700, enable depth of field, set focus distance to about 2100, and aperture to 100. Next, we need to extend our composition, so go up to Composition, Composition Settings, and increase the width to 12,000. If you want your animation to be shorter or longer, you can change that distance here. Once that's done, highlight your background layer and adjustment layer, then go to Layer, Transform, Fit to Comp so that they fill out the whole composition. Lastly, what we want to do is start duplicating our sphere and using it to fill out the whole composition. Highlight the sphere, press P for position, adjust the X and Y value, but to change the size of the circle, Instead of changing its scale, change its Z position to move it closer or further away from the camera. This is what allows us to take advantage of the depth of field effect that's on the camera we created earlier. Now duplicate the sphere, reposition it, and repeat this process until you've filled out your composition entirely with spheres. If you like the graphic featured in this video, be sure to check out our brand new Editor's Motion Pack. It features over 300 motion elements to help enhance your editing projects and make them stand out. With our easy to use extension, all you need to do is find a graphic you like and click apply. Once it's out on the timeline, you can use our simple control layers to customize the graphic to fit your needs. And just like that, you have an awesome custom composition to use in your projects. Check out the link in the description below or visit sunduckfilm.com for more details. Next, we're going to create and animate our main sphere going across the composition that we made. Start by duplicating one of the spheres, move it to the top of all the other spheres, and then rename it to Main Sphere. In the Effect Controls panel, set both colors of the gradient ramp to white, set the radius of the CC sphere to 65, set the light height to about 55, and increase the ambient setting and shading to around 17 to make the object nice and bright so that it stands out. Disable the layer as a 3D layer, then use the Align tool to put it at the center of the composition. 
Keep in mind that you can use anything as your main object, but for this tutorial I'm simply using one of our sphere objects. Now make sure the main sphere is highlighted, select the pen tool, then use the pen tool to create a waving path that goes all the way across the composition. Click and drag to create these smooth curves and have it go up and down, passing through the other spheres on the composition. Then once you get to the end of the composition, finish off the path by having it pass through the top right corner of the composition exactly. We're going to use this as a frame of reference later. Now open the sphere layer, open the mask, mask 1, highlight mask path, press ctrl c to copy it, then press P to open the position, set a keyframe, then press Ctrl V to paste the mask path onto the position as a position animation. Drag the rightmost keyframe to 5 seconds on the timeline to extend out the animation, then highlight all of the keyframes and reposition the animation so that the line ends at the top right of the composition just like we did with the mask. Now your object should animate across the entire composition like this. Next, we're going to add a streak layer that will go behind our main sphere solid and animate our camera to finish things off. Start by going to Layer, New, Shape Layer, we'll rename it to Streak 1, open the layer, select Add, Path, open the main sphere layer and copy the path of the mask once again and then paste it onto the path of the new shape layer. The path might not line up again, so use the arrow keys to adjust the path until it lines up with the sphere animation like this. Now go to Add, Stroke, and set the stroke width to 100. Next go to Add, Trim Paths, open the trim paths, set a keyframe for start and end at the start of the timeline, set end to 0%, Move forward a bit on the timeline, set start and end to 100%, then offset the keyframes for start by moving it a bit forward on the timeline. Now highlight both of the end keyframes and drag them to the right along the timeline until the line is underneath of our main sphere. Now you should see the streak going behind the sphere like this. Next, open stroke 1, taper, set the start length to 75%, end length to 30%, and end width to 15%. Again, feel free to experiment with all of these settings to make your composition unique. Set the mode for the streak to soft light, then go up to effect, stylize, glow, leave the settings default for the glow, then duplicate it, set the radius of the new glow to 100, and then duplicate the glow one more time. Now we're going to duplicate the entire streak layer, highlight the new one, set the stroke width to 65, then delete glow 2 and 3 in the effect controls panel. Now duplicate that line one more time and increase the stroke width to 140. You should now have this nice layered glowing trail behind your main sphere like this. Lastly, to finish off the composition, we're going to highlight everything we've done so far. Right click it, select pre-compose, make sure move all attributes is selected, and click OK. Now go to composition, composition settings, set the composition back to your default width, mine is 1920, then click OK. Highlight the pre-comp, press P for position, increase the X value until you're at the leftmost side of the pre-comp, Move on the timeline until the sphere is at the center of the screen and set a keyframe. Now move forward a bit on the timeline, decrease the X value until you're at the rightmost side of the pre-comp, find the spot on the timeline where the sphere is at the center of the screen again, and move your end keyframe there. Now the ball will come on screen, the screen will move with it, then it will stop and let the sphere move off screen like this. And now you have this awesome, fully animated solid with a trail behind it and an ongoing composition. Alright, that's it. Infinite worlds, infinite possibilities. Remember, if you like this tutorial and want more, all you have to do is drop a like. And of course, remember to hit that subscribe button to be reminded of when they do come out. And remember, always be creating.